Hey there, let's talk about direct seeding versus transplanting. So I often get asked, you know, should I be transplanting or direct seeding? And it really depends on the crop, the time of year, you know, the strategy on your farm. A lot, there's a lot of uh, variables in, in your context. So, you know, I got a nice tray of lettuce here. Should I start with that? Or should I just direct seed? So we're gonna talk about all that today. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of things to get into here. And I'm gonna first talk about transplanting. But before we do that, let's get some trays started. Got these trays prepped and ready. I'm gonna plant some lettuce seeds. If you haven't before uh, seen this video, check out this video. It's all about starting lettuce seeds, varieties I'm growing, transplanting lettuce, lots of cool stuff in there. It's an oldie but a goodie. Wait a minute, can I say an oldie? Have I been doing this long enough? I don't know, but either way, it's an old video for me. Check that video out, there's a lot of good information in there. And so I'm gonna get these lettuces planted and then uh, we'll talk about the pros and cons of transplanting. Man, this takes a while, huh? Good thing you're watching it in time lapse. Let's talk about the pros of transplanting. One of the best things is just that you can get awesome germination all year round if you're starting the seeds inside. I start mine in my garage and I talked a little bit about my rack system with lights in this video here about microgreens so you can check that out if you're interested. But the biggest thing for me is a lot of the crops I grow like lettuce, they won't germinate outside when it's hot outside. So you have to germinate them when they're cold. And so I do that in my garage because it's air conditioned. That is one of the best things is really controlled germination and with that you actually save a lot of seed because you don't have to throw out tons of seed pretty much everything will germinate and you know on a small scale it's not a huge difference if you're you know losing 10 20 percent of seed but on a bigger scale that could be a big difference when you transplant crops you definitely get a more accurate planting out in the field now if you direct seed and not everything germinates there might be spots and things like that but when you're transplanting things you're picking the best transplants to go in the ground, the healthiest, the strongest, things that have been hardened off well. And so when you put them in the ground, you'll get a really even cover in your beds. And so that will really maximize the growing in each bed. Another great benefit about transplanting is that you can really maximize the yield per bed in another way in that, let's say your lettuce takes three or four weeks to germinate. Well, you could have another crop that's growing out in the field and you've already put three or four weeks into that crop that's growing in trays inside or in your greenhouse. So you're getting three or four weeks extra growing before it even goes out in the field. So you'll get a lot more yield per bed. So if you're tight on space, uh, you can really get a huge jump on that crop because you've already started it inside. I think one of the obvious advantages of transplanting is that you can start your seeds a lot earlier in the year too. So 
you know, you can get your stuff started inside in the spring and then get it out in the field as soon as the weather permits. So, you know, you don't have to wait for it to get warm outside. You can already be starting things earlier. I know like for tomatoes, for example, I start seeds in like mid-February when it's way too cold to put tomatoes out, but by the time they're ready to go out, it's warm enough. So that can be a, a big advantage as well. Another thing you could do is the opposite of that. So what I just mentioned before about lettuce is in the summertime when it's hard to germinate things outside because it's too hot, you can actually germinate them inside. I even know people that will uh, germinate spinach inside and then transplant it out in like in the summer or late fall so that they've already got a start on that too. Um, you know, things like that would be really hard. You need a lot of plugs to do that. And so that can be a challenge as well. So let's talk about the cons. One of the biggest cons is the time commitment. So it takes time to start uh, seeds and trays to, to get them to germinate inside and grow and you have to nurture them and then you have to harden them off and then you have to transplant them and if you don't have the paper pot transplanter which I don't you know there's a significant time in transplanting you know direct seeding you can just take your seeder and rip down the bed and seed a bed in, in minutes and it's super super fast and so that's that's one of the big things the other thing is you need to have uh, more gear and more setup you have to have a nursery or a place to germinate your uh, your crops inside or in a, in a greenhouse and so you also need all these trays and all the equipment that goes along with that. You know for me I use my rack system and I got lights which is set up for doing microgreens and for doing trays but it's another commitment that you have to do in terms of buying gear so that you can do this and for some crops it is really worth it but it's another thing to consider. There's also an added cost to doing transplants you have to buy a potting mix and do that and you know, if you are using lights and stuff to grow them inside, you're using electricity. So there is a little bit of cost with that, but it's kind of a trade-off because you know, with some of these crops, you just get such better germination and higher quality uh, plants going out into the field because you're doing it this way. So it might be kind of a wash with that, but there is a cost involved with the equipment, which I mentioned, and also the, the potting mix. Uh, another con about transplanting is you have to worry about the timing. Now, you have to make sure that the crop is ready to get transplanted when you have a bed that's available. You know, with direct seeding, it's like, oh, that bed's empty, or I'm gonna flip this bed today, I can seed it right away. So, you know, you have to get your, your crop planting down and get some, you know, management with that so you anticipate what you're gonna need beforehand. So there's a little bit of planning involved there. I'm gonna put that under the con list, uh, but that's definitely something you can overcome. So let's talk about direct seeding pros and cons, but before we do that, let's, uh, let's bring the camera somewhere else and I'll grab a seeder and we can talk about that. In terms of cost, it's pretty low. You will need a seeder. Unless you're doing this on a really small scale at home, you can just create a furrow, drop some seeds and that sort of thing if you're just growing a few plants. But if you're doing anything at any reasonable scale, some sort of seeder will be helpful. I did a really good video about that, so check out this video here. I talk about my favorite seeder, which is the Jang seeder. If you're gonna invest in something right off the bat, dude, just get a Jang. They're just unbelievable, so accurate. They go through pretty much any soil condition. They're just amazing. Uh, if you're on more of a budget, the earth weighs great, and I talk about all that in the video, so check that out. So there is a little bit of a cost there, but it is a one-time cost, and you can use it for a whole bunch of different crops. Anyways, it's way too hot in the summer. I'm gonna go find a spot in the shade to finish this video. Another pro of direct seeding is that, you know, unless you have a paper pot transplanter, you know, when you're transplanting, you're basically leaning over the entire time, pushing plugs into the ground, and if you're direct seeding with a seeder, you just walk up and down. So for anyone with back pain, that is definitely a pro on the side for direct seeding. Another thing to consider when you're thinking about direct seeding versus transplanting is transplanting can also have an advantage in that the plants are bigger when they go out into the field and that can be better for a few reasons. One is they have a better chance of fighting off pests because they're a little bit larger and a little bit stronger than they're just when they come up out of the ground and they're really tiny baby seedlings. And the other thing is if you have a problem with weeds, uh, the, another benefit is that they will have a big advantage over the weeds because they have a couple weeks start. So if you start with a sale seed bed and you transplant, those plants will get bigger before the weeds will get bigger. And so you'll get that effect where they will shade out the weeds and keep them from growing as much. And you know, it's just, when you talk about all these pros about transplanting, you really think like, wait, I should be transplanting everything, but it doesn't make sense for every crop. So just wanted to compare the two, direct seeding versus transplanting. Let's talk about some crops. And I can't give recommendations for all the crops out there and I can just talk about the ones that I grow here. So for transplanting, I'll do uh, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, um, eggplants, squash, green onion, if I'm doing full-size kale, things like that. And direct seeding is all the baby greens, so stuff like arugula, baby kale, spinach, sorrel, radish, you know, all that kind of stuff, I can just direct seed it. And so those are some of the crops that 
you know, I've seen here, and, and some can go either way for sure, uh, depending on the time of year or, you know, your context. And, you know, for beets, for example, like I've had a lot of trouble direct seeding beets, and I, I've heard a lot of people swear by transplanting them. And for me, like, I don't really want that much effort for beets. You know, if you had a paper pot, maybe that would be worth it in, in, in that context. You know, so there's there's always different crops that might may or may not work in your context at the time of year and with your equipment and what your goals are and stuff like that. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. So uh, here's a bed of lettuce, not a bed. Let's get some, st uh, let's get some, bleh. but uh, if you haven't seen uh, a video of mine, and then we'll talk about the benefits and, actually kind of two steps because you have to uh, start the, the there are definite pros and cons about direct seeding. And I'm outside in front of the, I don't know if you can see them, the chicks now, they're about four weeks old. So a couple more weeks and they'll be, uh, they'll be out with, uh, you know, on pasture. So that'll be exciting.